I'm an Ubuntu fan. You know this. It's been my distribution of choice for five years now. Yes, of course, I flirted with other distributions, but at the end of the day, Ubuntu and I are committed to each other. But did all that change upon the release of 13.04? We'll find out. Brought to you by The Ben Hack Show. For the most part, Canonical's been doing really stellar things, recently with Ubuntu Touch, and just, I like the philosophy that Linux doesn't have to be a scary place to be. I'm right there with them on that. So it's been two weeks since Raring Ringtail rolled out, wow, that's a tongue twister, and I'm going to give you my review and kind of note the changes, both good and bad, that happened with this release. Alright 13.04, here we go. First thing here. Oh god, they got rid of workspaces? Where is my virtual desktop switcher? Don't worry, they have just been disabled by default to be easier on new users, I suspect. There it is, back in its multi-screen glory, and it now shifts predictably to where your mouse is headed. Pretty sweet. There's also some smoother snapping transitions than we've experienced before. Since we're all multitaskers nowadays and mutually distracted, Ringtail has also made it easier on us by allowing a left click and we can navigate through our windows that way, putting them on different workspaces or the same window, all in an effort to make our windows appear pretty like. With each release of Ubuntu, I usually do a new user test first, you know, to see if the version will be good for people in their Linux infancy. And all I do is start by playing a video. Lovely, it looks like Flash is there and the media codecs are pre-installed too. I'm all for a challenge, but skipping guesswork and having my media play out of the box is a welcome change and frankly not common with most distros. A lot of the usual stuff has changed this version, so let's check to see what we have installed on Ringtail by default. So we've already seen Firefox 20, and we have LibreOffice 4.0. Thunderbird, and there was supposed to be GIMP, but I'm not finding GIMP. That's kind of a bummer to see that it's still not in Ubuntu land. Oh yeah, Photo Manager and Rhythm Box too. So as you can see, there's really not a whole lot going on in the applications department that's new and exciting, and I gotta just come right out and say it. Dash, I never really got it. I mean, I understand the allure of having everything at your fingertips, it's like Mac Spotlight, but it just never really applied to me. Well, until now. In this day and age, we aim to maximize our efficiency and speed. Our time is a precious asset, so searches should never take long. I shudder to think about having to do a search within Windows for something I need right away. Ugh, <sighs> sorry Microsoft. See, while I was babbling on, I already did several searches in Ubuntu. That's good, but they were missing something. I'm not a very social person, believe it or not. It's hard for me to keep up with social groups, and the internet helps, but not completely. Canonical had this in mind when they put social lenses in Raring Ringtail. So I have some of my social accounts already preloaded in, and I go back to the social search to look up text conversations I have in Twitter. Of course there's Facebook and a medley of other social media stuff. But it doesn't just stop at text. Photos have been taken into consideration, which is wonderful for me because I'm a very visual person. I think I might actually keep using my Flickr account if I could search and find the photo I'm looking for right away, like this one. Now if you were like me, you may be initially worried about this. If Ubuntu can see my updates, then what's my privacy like? Well, you'll be relieved to know that there's improved social account management, where you can decide exactly what level of access applications on your computer have. I'm sure you've heard this before from me, but it's still true to this day. The one thing that I really love about Linux is its ability to revive dying technology. Think of all the computers you've had that are chugging away on its last breath. Don't throw it out, put Linux on it. I've installed Debian, Mint, and Fedora on countless sluggish machines and it's brought them back to life. But let's face it, that's not the same case with Ubuntu, especially with the Unity interface. It's notorious for being a power-hungry resource hog, and I'm gonna put the performance to the test with 13.04. Canonical seemed to overlook that when you pack an OS with features and new mechanics, it means that your resources are gobbled up like candy. Using the system monitor, you can see that the load on your system is a lot lighter with the new Raring Ringtail than it is with its previous Unity-based distros, and that is an awesome, awesome sign. 
I almost forgot to talk about installation. The upgrade process can be done with one hand tied behind your back, and the full installer is also oversimplified. I would have liked to see more detail in the new partition manager like they had in earlier releases. After all, if you're creating your own partitions, odds are you don't need to be coddled with layman terms. As a last hurrah, there's a lot more options for Ubuntu One and Bluetooth in the quick launch menu. And last but not least, a cute little log off button. Though I must admit, for speed, I'm still partial to halting my system from the command line. Overall, Ringtail is one of the more stable versions of Ubuntu I've used. Uh, it's actually not as resource hungry as before, which I'm surprised about, even though it's still Unity. But you can't get away from the fact that the features, all in all, are limited. We know that Canonical's development cycle for Ubuntu is half a year, so it's only fitting to assume that they're going to be working really, really hard on something awesome for us. So I guess what I'm asking is, do you think they phoned it in a little bit? Is the whole ringtail a raccoon reference? Like this guy, putting in a little effort for a big reward and taking advantage of what's there already, only to run away and work on some other projects. Maybe Canonical bit off more than they could chew with smart scopes? It's the lens that would allow you to search 100 plus online sources in Dash. Well, they decided it wasn't ready and they'll have to delay its release for 13.10. What do you guys think? Linux Insider said that they feared that Canonical was becoming Microsoft in a penguin suit. Come on now, it's not Microsoft, it's Apple and Mac's been wearing a penguin suit forever. So Mark Shuttleworth, I get what you're trying to do, I commend you, and I'm excited to see where Ubuntu and Canonical's going in the tech industry. I just kind of want to do something different for now. So I'm not fully broken up with Ubuntu, I'm just on break. What distribution do you guys think I should review? What should I cover next? Let me know what you think is worth it. Leave me a comment below, and until next time, thanks for watching OS Alt. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on next Friday's episode of All Things Open Source, where the kitty never ceases to interrupt me. But she's cute. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of community-inspired creations. You can catch new episodes of The Ben Heck Show every single week right here at revision3.com slash tbhs. In the latest episode of The Ben Heck Show, Ben shows viewers how to create an automated doggy treat dispenser. Yep, that's a thing. Oh, and don't forget to go to element14.com slash tbhs to find out how you can enter to win one of the builds from Ben's show. Now, if only I could get him to help me make a Pip-Boy 2000. It's possible, right, Vol Boy? <laughs>